Hey guys, Kid Eye Kino here. Um, I'm working on ripping a few movies for my first uh, Ultimate Kaiju Binge video. So I figure real quick while I'm doing that, I'll get this uh, belated 500 subscriber special out of the way. I say belated because as I film this, I think I'm uh, between 650 and 700 subscribers. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, 674 right now, so right about in the middle. Almost all added since that um, Criterion video, uh, which is now sitting at 8.2 thousand views, which is the most views of any of my videos so far by quite a wide margin. So I'm very excited by the uh, response to that, and I hope you guys uh, stick around and check out some of my other videos while you're here. And so without any further ado, let's get into this uh, Q&A. So I had a few pinned uh, posts and comments um, where people could leave questions for this. I'm going to start with my pinned tweet. So first up, just going in the order they're displayed here, uh, Akane's Kiryu asks, What advice do you have for others hoping to help out in the fan restoration circle? I guess for, for people starting out, I'd just say, you know, um, e even if even if you don't start with a project you would necessarily post anywhere, or um, even if you don't start with something that nobody has done yet, um, just find something to uh, recreate and just start playing with it. I mean, I uh, basically learned all of my stuff that I've done on projects like that uh, just by myself kind of messing around. I started it very spontaneously um, in the wake of the announcement of Kraken's Return of Godzilla DVD and Blu-ray. As I've learned things working on these projects, I have uh, revisited some that I did before to kind of bring that new knowledge to, you know, correcting issues with uh, my previous work or, you know, just generally improving or doing things better as my methods kind of evolve. You know, so basically I'd say just start doing it. Maybe start um, small, maybe start with uh, replicating simple things, just, you know, syncing dubs to movies, I don't, I don't know. The, the simpler projects you can start with um, might be the better just to find out if it's for you, but the first one I did was Godzilla 1985, which was a very uh, complicated and labor-intensive project and so you know jumping in at the deep end can work too uh, but my you know my best advice would just be to just start doing it start somewhere and figure out from there if it's for you and what you want to do all that kind of stuff you know it's just a matter of getting started so next up I have three in a row from DJ Crumb Ryan. First up, how are you so awesome? Mostly deceptive editing. Uh, second up, also first Godzilla film and or how you got into the fandom. So my first uh, encounter with anything Godzilla related I happened to catch, I guess this would have been in like 2002 or something like that. Uh, I happened to catch a little bit of uh, the 1998 Godzilla film on TV. Uh, I think it was the scene where uh, Godzilla first kind of shows up in New York and uh, Hank Azaria almost gets stepped on and that left an impression on me because I was already really into dinosaurs at the time and I remember specifically the image of the tail kind of swiping the building and so that was what kind of that was what I was looking for as I started getting into these movies. I, I asked uh, I asked my parents what it was, they said, uh, it's Godzilla. And so I was like, okay, Godzilla. And so from there I went and started looking for that film, uh, which started with borrowing a VHS tape of Godzilla King of the Monsters from some family friends, you know, and just seeing some more of those films, I think the other ones I saw were uh, Godzilla 2000, uh, before finally finding out about what that uh, film I had seen was. And in the process, I kind of just fell in love with uh, Godzilla in general. And so that was how I got into it. As for how I got into the fandom actively, I found like fan websites fairly early on. Uh, the main one I hung out on and read a lot on 
was Godzilla Tower, uh, which I think is still up. Um, as is Barry's Temple of Godzilla. I didn't read so much on that one, but I did look at that too. And so those were kind of my introduction to the internet presence of Godzilla and Godzilla fans. Um, the first place I really started participating in discussions with other fans were the uh, Toho Kingdom boards. Uh, back on the old boards, actually, uh, before they migrated to their current site. So, unfortunately, all my first uh, interactions with other G fans are, are lost to time, but considering that was like maybe 2010, um, and I was like 13, 14, you know, that might be for the best. And finally, hottest take or anything underappreciated that you want to highlight. Um, I feel like I haven't, you know, since I haven't spotlighted it in its own full video yet, I can still give um, Godzilla's Revenge as a good movie as an answer for this one. Uh, I will always go to bat for that. I have, you know, for a long time I accepted what were kind of the fandom orthodoxy opinions on certain films, um, but I've kind of come around to a not quite contrarian, but more um, critical and questioning perspective, and some of that has been looking at films that are, you know, widely considered not that great, like Godzilla's Revenge, and just saying, well, is this that bad? And in that case, I have to say no. I mean, it's obviously got its limitations, and it obviously is different from a lot of the other classic films as it's, you know, aimed explicitly at children for the first time. Um, but I think for what it is, for the limitations Honda was working under, it's an enjoyable and interesting film. And I really do need to get around to making a whole video about it one of these days. All right, next up, Josh asks, what do you anticipate the most from Toho's Godzilla Genesis campaign? Um, hell, uh, I mean, there's, there's always the possibility of new transfers of the movies, which some of them are in dire <laughs> need of, frankly. Um, I'm not holding my breath, but I think for the push to, um, to really gain that much traction with foreign distributors, I think they are probably going to need, like, 2K, 4K masters, and so that's at the very least going to require new scans, because the existing HD transfers literally don't exist in any higher resolution than 1080i. And other than that, um, they mention providing to distributors uh, music and effects tracks for dubs, trying to make these films, I think, more accessible in languages other than Japanese, um, especially maybe Chinese. I, I've seen some people say they seem to be really eager to break into the Chinese market, which is, you know, it's a huge market, and uh, historically had less exposure to Godzilla, so... But who knows, considering that they're trying to disappear the uh, existing US versions, more or less, or prevent those from being included on releases of the Japanese versions, um, we may end up seeing new English dubs as well. And, you know, obviously, I disagree very, very strongly in principle with their trying to sort of erase these uh, existing US versions and their, you know, historical significance to generations of fans. Um, but on the other hand, uh, these, you know, the possibility of new dubs is always interesting, especially considering that it'll probably be different from the existing kind of uh, strains of dubs we've had. Because we've had, you know, largely the Tetra slash Titan dubs, the Frontier dubs, the uh, Hong Kong dubs, and this will be, you know, something new to add to the pile, a new, you know, piece of that whole, uh, that whole tapestry of different dubs, <laughs> you know, uh, silly as it sounds, but it, it'll be interesting, even though it will probably be either something like, um, like the VSI slash Netflix dub for Neon Genesis Evangelion, where it's a little overly literal, a little bit stiff. Um, either that or something like the Funimation dub, which has some similar problems, uh, still being part of the overall like anime voice acting industry, and um, 
you know, very closely overseen by the rights holder, as was the new Ava dub, um, or at least kind of beholden to a translation they provided. But I think uh, that'll be interesting to see, if nothing else. It'll be it'll be something new, even though, uh, for instance, the 2005 DVD dub of the Mysterians doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, but it's something to look at, and I'll be interested to see how it turns out if it comes to pass. Um, it'll at least be more interesting than Godzilla-branded shoelaces. Westlake asks, got a favorite performance of the franchise, human or otherwise? Um, that's a, that's a tough one, honestly. Uh, uh, like a favorite single performance is hard to say. Obviously I, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of uh, Yumiko Shaku as Akane Yashiro in um, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. I've gone on about that at length already. Uh, I won't kind of labor that point that much anymore. Honestly, other than that, I just love Raymond Burr in both of the movies that he was in, in King of the Monsters and Godzilla 1985. I just love to watch him in those. Just kind of the deadpan quality of both performances and also just the, the gravity he brings to Godzilla 1985. Um, even having, you know, shot it all in like a day uh, for, you know, very little money, he takes it seriously and, and you know, gives it his all <laughs> in terms of just dramatic gravitas, and I really appreciate that. I love uh, Raymond Burr's contributions to the series. Dillo Fellow slash Gajiller asks, which video of yours was the most fun to make? I'd say probably the um, the Shin Godzilla video, and I think um, even though in terms of its place in discourse, it's uh, got its shortcomings, it's maybe a little hasty about attributing sentiments to uh, like large swaths of the fandom when they don't necessarily all hold that, and I think I should have found more specific uh, statements and individuals kind of to respond to rather than just saying you know this is this branch of the fandom and this is what they think um, I think that was kind of the biggest shortcoming of that and I did kind of get called out for that a little bit and you know fair is fair on that but I think I had the most fun putting that one together because that was the first one I kind of approached as like a youtuber and attempting a kind of lighter maybe somewhat breezier more humorous less academic tone than my first video essay which had actually been my uh, capstone project for my degree from DePaul University and so I think that was probably the one I had the most fun uh, making it's 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 the one I look back on uh, very fondly, for sure. Even if the actual process of making it involved a lot of uh, schlepping my ass up to uh, Lincoln Park um, just to edit the thing at the DePaul Library because I didn't have a working computer at the time to use myself. It was still a fun and rewarding experience and did a lot to confirm for me that, you know, this channel was something I wanted to do. The Kaiju Apostle Podcast asks, How did you learn so much about Toho's restoration slash preservation process? Watching your video was awesome, but the information was overwhelming at times. Yeah, it is very much an info dump. Uh, I'm very <laughs> I'm very prone to that, as anyone who knows me in person kind of knows. I, I do have trouble uh, sometimes kind of editing and, uh, and with brevity and things like that. Uh, Michael Kalari, uh, astounding beyond belief. He um, called me out on even implying in that video that I would be addressing anything briefly. But um, but yeah, no, it's mostly just from conversations with people who have been uh, researching and discussing this stuff for years and years. They're at least a few of them pretty active in uh, the home video threads on the Toho Kingdom boards. Uh, as well as elsewhere, um, you know, it's it's mostly uh, talking to and interacting with these people, and these are you know also people who are interested in preserving and reconstructing alternate versions of these films that are being neglected. Um, there is a a great 
kind of smaller sub-community of these people out there, and it's it's been something that's very rewarding for me, kind of, you know, just hanging out and talking with and learning from these people. And so a lot of that is secondhand, very little of that is uh, original research, per se. But yeah, no, I'm glad you appreciated the information, even though it was kind of uh, <laughs> overwhelming. Um, but yeah, that is mostly, I do have to give credit to, you know, uh, the other people I've interacted with. Uh, for that one, and I know some of their uh, discussion circles are a little bit um, closed down, they like a little bit of privacy, so I'm not going to uh, put them on blast exactly, but um, yeah, no, it's been amazing learning from people who know a lot about film as a technology, um, and who know a lot about the kind of history I was addressing in that video, it's been fantastic and I've learned a lot. Evan Krell asks, what's your favorite underrated human cast of a Godzilla film? That's a difficult one. I mean, I find the Masaki Tezuka films are often painted with the same brush as being very, very dull, but you know, as I've said at great length previously, um, I love the human cast of Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. I think it's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the most uh, emotionally compelling human casts and, and arcs and everything in the series. Other than them, um, it's it's hard to say who's really underrated per se. I mean, I guess, you know, having just rewatched uh, Godzilla Raids again, and I'll talk more about that in the binge video, um, I do like the cast of that. I Something about that movie kind of clicked for me in a way it hadn't before, but, you know, more on that later. Coleman Melvin asks, which of your restorations was the most slash least enjoyable to work on. Godzilla 1985 was uh, extremely um, rewarding in terms of, of knowledge and experience to work on, just because I've, you know, I had to uh, go back to it once the uh, Blu-ray came out, and I, I was able to, you know, revise and improve it a few times over. And, uh, you know, even to now with a project I'm working on that I won't go into too much detail about too publicly. Um, it's It's been, you know, just amazing to see how that project has progressed, especially for a version of a film that I feel um, has been one of the biggest losses the way it's been uh, neglected since the VHS era. You know, just for featuring a, you know, a second a uh, great performance by Raymond Burr, but it's been so seldom seen and released. Uh, it's it's just a shame, and I've loved being able to kind of bring it back from, I don't know about obscurity, I don't know how much I've actually raised its profile among fans, but you know, it's, it's just, that's been great. As for the least enjoyable, probably Son of Godzilla. Honestly, I, that, that one presented the least, um, well, let me see, the least unique challenges that I could really do much of anything about. I was forced to compromise a lot on that one, uh, relying on a pan and scan VHS for uh, much more of the film than I would have liked, and you know, even though that's really mostly just the beginning and the end. But yeah, no, there, there wasn't much that was that challenging about it that I was able to actually find a solution for. And that's what I've enjoyed mostly about these kind of reconstruction projects, is finding solutions and workarounds for uh, the problems presented by the various sources that are available. And that was the one that, you know, uh, there was kind of the least to be done with it. And I think, you know, that was unfortunate. It's also not a film I like very much, but, you know, neither was Destroy All Monsters, but I had some fun working on that one. Aside from the monster scenes, it's, you know, it's really not a favorite of mine at all. But, you know, I learned something from working on it. Uh, Son of Godzilla, on the other hand, was one that I don't care for that much as a film and that I got the least out of working on, I'd say. And finally, we come to Faye asking, how do you feel about people trashing the MonsterVerse and its fandom and vice versa with MonsterVerse fans insulting the Japanese films and their fandom? <sighs> I don't know, fandom drama is messy, man. I I have my opinions about it, but it's, it's I don't know. Uh, sometimes just seeing it is, is kind of exhausting, and it's not something I prefer to uh, devote too much of my time and energy to. 
Uh, most of the time my problems with certain parts of the fandom kind of just find me. It's not something I go out of my way to devote too much, too much time to uh, thinking about, to tell you the truth. Now, I think the MonsterVerse has its strengths and weaknesses, um, but ultimately I like that it's at least kind of raising the visibility of kaiju films in, uh, in America and worldwide. Um, getting somewhat of a wider reach than a lot of the Japanese films would. Um, I think it's it's uh, it's a strange but inevitable thing that some people are kind of dismissing the uh, you know the the importance and the influence of the Japanese films over those. Um, I mean, it was bound to happen, but it's a strange attitude to have, frankly. Um, but I think that's about all I'm going to say on that. Moving on to the responses to the pinned comment under the Criterion video, uh, Rogue K asks, how are you doing today? Good, I hope. Um, I'm actually doing pretty good today. I just uh, spent some time last night and this morning with, uh, with my family. Um, then I got back and I've kind of just been hanging around since then. I watched uh, Half Human for the binge, uh, first time in years. It was interesting um, to revisit that after so long. And yeah, now it's been a pretty chill day, and now I'm just kind of doing this. Uh, ZX the Hedgehog 42 asks, is there a database for the various cuts and releases of the Showa era Godzilla films? I don't know about a one central database exactly, uh, but there are a couple of very, very good threads on Toho Kingdom that I'll have to uh, link in the description to this video. There's one that's like a comprehe uh, comprehensive list of the different English versions that exist, and there's another thread that is just for general helpful info about the different home video releases. So yeah, no, check those out, absolutely, if you're uh, interested in, in learning about that stuff. JR62 asks, do you or anyone know if Gigantis had a VHS release? I seem to remember one, but I may be wrong, never seen it again. Not with that title on the cover, but the Video Treasures uh, Godzilla Raids Again VHS does feature uh, Gigantus the Fire Monster, that version of the film with the original title card and everything, which was of course replaced on the classic media DVD. Um, so yes, yes it did, just not under that title uh, on the box. Andrew Sidlick, I hope I'm getting that right, asks a uh, very in-depth discussion of the package and disc features thanks i didn't realize some of the movies come without english dubs this is astounding to me and goes to show how little media companies care about accessibility i'm legally blind so reading subtitles is very difficult i'm considering writing to criterion about this um that is unfortunate and that is another um that is another you know obvious downside to uh the lack of dubs on some of these films, and it's the reason dubs are important, I think. Um, one, one, of, uh, one of a few reasons, obviously just, uh, you know, there's the one that's often cited about making the series accessible to kids who are the target audience for um, especially some of the later Showa films, but you know, yeah, no, there's people who have trouble uh, reading subtitles uh, for, you know, maybe uh, visual processing reasons, um, you know, linguistic processing reasons, or that sort of thing, or, you know, vision issues like you, uh, like you mentioned. And that is a shame, and that is, you know, if we do get brand new Toho sanctioned dubs for uh, some of these films, I mean, I guess it will be good to at least have dubs that Toho will allow to be released. Uh, I don't know how much there is to be gained from writing to Criterion about it per se. Um, this is really a, a Toho thing and a Toho policy thing. But yeah, I see no reason why Criterion wouldn't have included dubs of some kind uh, for all of the films had they been able to, but they were just prevented from doing so. It was kind of out of their hands from the looks of it, which is unfortunate. And um, I don't know, I hope I hope something changes either with Toho producing new dubs or, or just kind of changing their policy on the existing ones, you know, somehow, unlikely as the latter scenario is. Um, but yeah, no, I hope something, uh, something gives with that whole situation, um, because that is unfortunate. 
Uh, but that's not even uh, your whole question here, let me see. Given the lack of dubs, can you point out the best releases with dubs for those movies lacking them here? In fact, it would be great to hear your preferred version for all these Showa films since there are so many. I have this Criterion set, but I guess I'm going to have to still buy additional copies so I can comfortably watch some of these movies. Siren. Sorry. Give, give that a second. Yeah, um... Let me see, which movies are missing dubs? Godzilla Raids Again doesn't have a dub uh, on the set. The classic media DVD is really the only disc release that has that. Uh, Mothra vs. Godzilla has no dub again. Um, the classic media DVD is a good place to go for that, although it is um, not a very good transfer of the US version, unfortunately. But it is there, uh, and it is accompanied by the Japanese version. Also, audio commentary, that's always good. Uh, there's also the very, very long out of print Scimitar DVD, uh, which has the original aspect ratio of the English version, but um, it's a very old disc and not very good quality so probably um, I, I would probably recommend for that the uh, the classic media disc but there are also uh, fan recreations of that one in better quality out there uh, if you know where to look let me see there's no Ghidra dub either um, I would just go for the uh, classic media disc on that one. Um, their version of it isn't perfect, but it is, you know, it is there. Fan recreations of that one out there too. Fan recreations of a lot of these. Um, if you want HD copies of the dubs, that's, you know, basically uh, what you gotta do for, for most of these. Let me see, they do have the dub for Astro Monster. They don't have one for uh, Ebira slash Sea Monster. The Kraken Blu-ray is probably the way to go uh, for that if you want any dub at all. Uh, that'll be the uh, Frontier export dub commissioned by Toho. As for the uh, the original US television dub from Walter Reed Sterling, uh, that isn't as far as I know on disc at all. You would have to either go for a fan recreated version or for a VHS copy. Uh, Son of Godzilla does have the um, the export dub, the Frontier dub. Um, if you want the US version of that, yeah, you basically gotta go for fan recreations or VHS again. But that one does have a, um, a dub on the disc, so same goes for Destroy All Monsters. Same situation as Son of Godzilla there, uh, although the out of print and very expensive uh, 2011 Media Blasters release does at least contain the uh, original US dub uh, edited and synced to the uh, Japanese cut of the film. But yeah, there is a, a dub on the current disc for that one. Uh, I think the, the others lacking dubs on the disc um, of any kind at all. Let's see, that's All Monsters Attack. Uh, Godzilla vs. Hedera and Godzilla vs. Gigan. The former uh, All Monsters Attack slash Godzilla's Revenge. Um, I would go for the classic media DVD for that one. I think there is also an HD fan reconstruction out there, um, which was shown at the Pickwick at G Fest, um, but I still have no idea who made that or where to find it. Um, so, yeah. All I can really tell you is the uh, classic media DVD has that in a reasonably good presentation. And as for Hedera and Gigan, um, Hedera's US dub, uh, the Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster version, has never been uh, officially released on DVD. There is a very poor quality Canadian unlicensed DVD out there, um, but if you want that one, uh, you're more or less, I think, stuck with the VHS and Laserdisc. Uh, but the export dub is on the um, Kraken Blu-ray of that one, and also, of course, the Sony DVD. But for HD releases, yeah, you have the Kraken release, and uh, Godzilla vs. Gigan's dub is also on the um, Kraken release of that one. Uh, I have no idea why the, the you know, Toho-approved uh, dubs for those two were left off the um, Criterion set, but yeah, there we have it. 
Very weird. And then the last one we have there is just a reply from Dakota Mike, seconding Andrew's uh, comment there and his desire to learn more about the best releases of these films. Um, honestly, what constitutes the best is kind of a complicated question, especially for a number of these films that, you know, the Kraken Blu-ray releases are, are very easy to recommend for having generally better transfers uh, and also including English dubs for those films. But when it comes down to films that um, hadn't been uh, released at all, on Blu-ray in the US before this set, it does become a more complicated and somewhat more subjective question. I don't really know how far um, one should just go on my recommendations. I think it's it's worth looking into uh, the releases that are out there um, for yourself and seeing what's on them. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of depends on your own priorities a little bit. I, you know, I can't be an authority on, you know, what everybody prefers from a given disc. I could do a video series giving overviews of all of these, but it um, that's not exactly high on my list at the moment. Uh, but who knows, maybe someday. And finally we come to the pinned YouTube comment on the uh, Kaiju Binge announcement video. Uh, John Herman asks, do you have any Godzilla or Kaiju or Tokusatsu soundtracks? If so, which ones? I have pretty much the entire Godzilla series soundtracks uh, downloaded, um, as well as a number of other soundtracks, a few Sentai ones, uh, most of the Evangelion soundtracks. Um, as for what I own physically, um, I have vinyl pressings of the two uh, GNP Crescendo uh, Godzilla soundtrack compilations. I, these were, I think, FYE exclusives. I also have the same labels uh, US CD releases of the soundtracks to Godzilla 2000 and Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. I have uh, Godzilla the album on CD. Endless Bangers that one, it's a classic. I have the uh, original Japanese album release of uh, Godzilla Final Wars on CD. And that about, I think, uh, covers it. I have also the the, <laughs> the Target promo CD that came with my uh, DVD of Cloverfield way back in 2008. Uh, but as for original scores and soundtracks from uh, from Godzilla films, that's basically what I have on physical uh, disc media. And finally, there is no god but Godzilla and Mothra is his prophet. Ah, oh, hey, shout out right there uh, for um, for re-upping. Uh, on Patreon. So, if you could remake one of Toho's films as a MonsterVerse tie-in, which would it be? That's a tough one. Uh, a Mothra solo movie could be cool. Um, I, you know, I just personally, I like Mothra a lot, and I felt like she didn't have a whole lot to do uh, in King of the Monsters, although, although the parts that she was in, I did really, really enjoy. That would be neat. Otherwise, um, Maybe something bringing back uh, another obscure uh, monster or opponent at some point. Um, or just a big destroy all monsters type blowout. Like that would be a lot of fun to see I think with uh, Monsterverse effects. And also if you could add Godzilla into any existing franchise, which would you choose? Uh, I feel like the obvious answer here is the Gamera franchise. Um, I'm not as you know, invested or chomping at the bit for that crossover as I think uh, some people are or have been. Um, but it would be neat to see. I'd like to, I'd like to see it. Other than that, oh god, I, I really don't know. Maybe not a franchise per se, but I would love to see Bong Joon-ho do a Godzilla movie. He did The Host. Uh, just earlier this year he did Parasite and on the strength of those two films I'm gonna have to go and see more of his stuff because those are both excellent films and I think he would be a natural choice uh, for what seems to be the slightly auteurist direction that Toho is going with their Godzilla films now that the MonsterVerse is kind of handling the more uh, traditional ones so I'd love to see him you know have a shot at, at Godzilla I almost forgot my man Cronin of the uh, original Tumblr Kaiju crew 
and now the uh, Kaiju Crew Discord, now that Tumblr's basically dead, sent me a few uh, questions via private messages on Discord. First up we have, in Gamera vs. Zegra, when Gamera plays Zegra's exoskeleton like a xylophone, he strikes that same fin twice in succession, and yet he produces two clearly different tones. I mean, what are we, to believe that this is some sort of a magic space shark skeleton or something? Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Quality. Classic. In all seriousness, on the Godzilla Movie Studio Tour CD-ROM, is there a way to get out of the Kawakita dungeon without Baggins Key? Bless you. I don't know, I've never managed it myself. But I can't help thinking, uh, maybe the haunted Gigan suit would help, but I haven't figured out how to unlock that yet, so... Uh, we, we may just never know. Finally, in all serious seriousness, with the recent failure, in air quotes because it's debatable, of King of the Monsters at the box office and its rather lukewarm to negative reception, and the incoming, often rumored, not confirmed new string of Toho-produced films potentially reviving the one-a-year format the Millennium and Heisei series are famous for, do you think the franchise will start to wane in popularity again a la the end of the Millennium series? Do you think we'll ever see another wilderness period for the Godzilla series? Well, uh, as for whether we will ever see another wilderness period, um, yes. Probably. I mean, I don't, I don't see uh, the series just chugging along steadily forever. Um, it basically never has. Uh, the longest period of absolutely sustained activity it seems to have pulled off was um, uh, was probably from like 1991 through 2004, uh, which is about 15 years, um, about the same span as uh, you know King Kong versus Godzilla through Terror of Mechagodzilla. It seems like it, it can only really keep going at that rate for so long without wearing out its welcome or just kind of declining from relevance. And so, yeah, I think we'll, you know, eventually we'll see a lull again, you know. It's, it's cyclical, it seems. Uh, it always seems to happen after a while. Um, as for whether Toho will mismanage this new uh, push of theirs, um, maybe. Maybe. I mean, it seems like they, after the success of uh, the 2014 film, very quickly got back to doing... Shin Godzilla, and then the very next year after that we had the anime trilogy starting, and those were coming out every six months. And granted, those were uh, kind of one uh, total work, the anime films, so it's not like, you know, they were releasing a whole new, uh, whole new project, brand new, every six months. Um, but it still was a very, very quick, almost hasty way to follow up um, Shin Godzilla and 2014 and I do um, kind of worry that that eagerness will kind of resurface when the ball's back in Toho's court and they'll kind of shoot themselves in the foot. I do worry about that but if nothing else until that catches up with them it seems like we have a precedent for some pretty interesting things to happen with the franchise. If Shin Godzilla and the anime trilogy as flawed as I find it um, if those are any indication, then I think at the very least we'll have, you know, some very rapid output of interesting stuff uh, before the franchise kind of burns out again. So yeah, you know, thanks a lot to all of my new subscribers. It's been really exciting seeing, uh, seeing this channel uh, grow a little bit in viewership after that uh, Criterion video. Um, it's been great to see the positive reception of that. I mean, I almost felt kind of... Uh, silly uploading an hour-long video just ranting about the minutia of this set and you know the history behind it so I, I was really glad to see the the positive reception of that and I'm glad people liked it I'm, I'm glad people are subscribing I hope people stick around and I hope this channel continues to grow shout out to uh, Exploder Button and uh, stay tuned for my um, you know my upcoming uh, kaiju binge videos. So far I'm pretty much uh, staying on time with that and so hopefully I can uh, keep this up and get through it. So I'll see you guys next time.